Koberger's journey after the crime. So I recently was, I just heard somebody make the claim online that Koberger took like a two, it was like an hour and a half to two hour trip to Johnson, Idaho the day after the murders. And I was like, wait, what? Why have I never heard that? That he drove east like two hours away because it's not true. It's literally not true. Hmm. So where did this claim come from? Um, the claim comes from the PCA where they talk about the cell phone pings when Koberger made the trip down south to Lewiston and Clarkson. Okay. Okay. That's where it comes from. So I'm just going to take you through the journey really quick. So then we can talk about it. November 13th, 912 AM is when Koberger pings by the home supposedly and stays there for 10 minutes. Okay. Nine 12 AM stays mm -hmm. for 10 minutes. Then his cell phone shows moving south from Pullman towards Lewiston. Wait, that's the day after the crime? This is, well, it's the same day. It's November 13th. Yeah, yeah. But his phone never disconnected from the Pullman Tower. What are you talking about? It His phone never disconnected from the Pullman Tower. I never, I didn't say it disconnected. Oh, okay. So wait, say that one more time. Because he wasn't at 1122. He was connected to the Pullman Tower the entire time. And the Pullman Tower doesn't go to 1122. Okay. Oh. Good. <laughs> Great. I never said he disconnected from anything. Oh, oh okay. You're jumping ahead. <laughs> oh. Because of what I said earlier, aren't you? No. Okay. That's, that's just what I've noticed. That That's that 12th yeah. ping that they try using. 13th. But it, it never... 13th. It... it in their data, according to them, his phone was connected to the Pullman Tower, right. and they're saying that he was at 1122. Yeah. But the Pullman Tower doesn't go to 1122. Right. Yeah. So then his his phone is moving south of Pullman, which I think he I think he went home after that because it according shows According to them. Yeah. Because otherwise the, I don't think that's true at all. I think that is a mistake because they I don't have think somebody... he ever went over to Moscow no. that day. I really, I truly do not. But according even if to the he's PCA, guilty, even if he's guilty, even if he's I don't guilty, think he did. I don't think he did either. And I think the cell phone data shows the opposite of what the PCA is alleging. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, so, and it doesn't, they don't even talk about him going back home after they just jump to his phones moving south of Pullman. Um, and he goes to Lewiston, which is on the border of Washington State, and across the river, which is Snake River, is Clarkston, Washington. So we have Lewiston, Idaho, Clarkston, Washington. He's headed down there, and then at 12.36 p.m., so like noon, um, it shows that he's next to Port Drive Kate's Cup stand. Wait, wait, wait. No. It's Port Drive. It's the street name. Port Drive. And that is Kate's Cup Coffee Stand. Okay. It's uh, Kate's Cup of Joe Coffee Stand. Okay. I don't know why I'm reading my own notes so backwards right now. Um, so he's right next to there. And then surveillance at U.S. Chief Store shows vehicle drive by. And then at 1246, he's on surveillance at Albers, Albertsons. He goes in the store. 1249, he's walking through buying things. 104 p.m., he leaves. And then there's no location data for the next few hours. Okay. Then 530 p.m., his cell phone is located in Johnson, Idaho. But the thing is, is Johnson, Idaho does not exist. There is no Johnson, Idaho. So this is where court TV comes in because I found a video by them because I was looking it up on my phone. I was like, where is Johnson, Idaho? What was popping up was south, like multiple hours south of Clarkston and Lewiston. And it's like a street or in like some businesses that pop up. It is not a city. 
Okay. So I'm like, what? That doesn't make sense. Why would he be that far south? That that makes no sense because then a little bit later, he's back home. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it didn't make sense. So I found uh, Chanley Painter did a video where, you know, she showed the route. And Johnson is actually in Washington. And this is the map. Uh, it's right here. And when you, it's this little dot right here. And when you look it up on a map, you can clearly tell that if he's driving by on that interstate, the cell tower may say he's there in Johnson, Washington, when really he's just driving by that and tiny there's only town. only one tower there. Yeah. Yeah. I know where well, that tower is. You it's know, in between Pullman, Clarkston, and Moscow, literally right, right in the middle. Right. Yeah. It's right there. And Chanley was trying to say, and look, it's surrounded by cell phone towers, which I thought was so ridiculous because the picture is, is just that. Yeah. that That's not surrounded by cell phone towers. That's probably the only one. <laughs> yeah. it That doesn't even look like a cell phone tower to me. Yeah, it looks a bit odd. I don't know. There's no bars on it. So I don't know who's saying that's a cell phone tower, but it, Chanley Painter on Court TV. Yeah, uh, I need to see a better view to tell you if that's a cell phone yeah, tower. Yeah, it's too far away. We can pull up the, the video. I think there's a few shots of it. Um, mm-hmm. but anyway, it's only like 15 minutes south of Pullman, um, and it's in Washington, not Idaho. And it, it you know, Chanley says, and it fits the the way he's driving down to Clarkston or Lewiston and back up to Pullman. Like it fits with the trajectory. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It it makes sense according to what the PCS PCA says. So no, Brian Koberger did not drive two hours away some way East to a Johnson, Idaho that doesn't exist. Hmm. Um, He drove down to Lewiston and back up home. Apparently to go to Albertsons. But yeah. here's the thing. So, um, like I said, 530, he's located in Johnson, Washington. And um, then from 530 to it's 532 to 536 that he's in Johnson. So that's about f- like four minutes. OK. Makes sense for it to be a cell phone tower ping where he's literally just passing by on the interstate. Yeah. Well, then his cell phone goes dark for three hours where there is no data connection again, just like on the night of the murders Mm. Uh, until 8 30 PM. So from 5 36 PM to 8 30 PM, his phone is dark. Mm. There's no connection. And this is a similar route that he took on the night of the murder, supposedly now, not the same area he would have been in. Maybe. I mean, we don't really know. Yeah, that's interesting. So after he passes Johnson, there's nothing Hmm. for three entire hours. Yeah. Odd, right? So that means he either turned it off, put it in airplane mode, or there's just no cell tower data. There, There was no connection to the towers. So what does that mean? Does that mean Brian Koberger just likes to turn his phone off? sometimes to get have like a clear mind does that mean the cell tower coverage is that bad in that area were their cell towers down was he fighting with family and turned off his you know phone like Mm -hmm. i feel like there's so many factors there but what they allege is like oh my gosh he's in the middle of nowhere he's in the middle of nowhere why is this happening like he was probably getting rid of evidence he was probably throwing the knife somewhere but My question is, like, just to throw in some reasonable doubt in there, is that, okay, Johnson is 15 minutes south of Pullman, and then Lewiston is 41 minutes. Okay. Like, could he not have just taken a day trip down there to go shopping? Yeah. Because it's the only, there are no other Albertsons in this area. This is the only Albertsons in this entire area. Yeah. So did for some reason he just really like Albertsons? Maybe. Maybe there's a certain thing there that he can only get there that he wants that he goes down there to get. Yeah. it. I mean, it could be. 
It could be. I'm I'm and that this type of shopper of where I will drive way out of my way to get something that I want. Yeah, like I do that too. Something dumb like chips, you know. <laughs> I do that too. Yeah. So, um, you know, that just it makes me question it. You know what I mean? Like, did he go down to this little area? Because it's. I even looked up the grocery stores in Pullman. There's like a Walmart and a couple others, but there's nothing that great. You know what yeah. I mean? Albertsons is like. T- typically a California grocery store, though, there are some scattered throughout the country. They're few and far between, though, but they may carry spe- a specific thing that he wanted to go get for some reason. I yeah. don't know. I have no idea. Um, but it's not like his. I don't know. It's just interesting. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's curious. It's either super suspicious and shady or it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think anything like that is super suspicious or shady it's it's for me it's very black and white is there evidence of you concealing um you know evidence yeah yeah the murder weapon yeah if there's not then who cares what you're doing who cares that you turned your phone off who cares that you went driving all day? Who cares any of that stuff? Those are all things that we're allowed to do and it who cares who judges somebody for that? You know, I either I I want to know if you're concealing evidence or you're doing or we have evidence of you doing a crime. And that's what's important. And I really hope they do. I I do. I hope they do. So so basically what they're saying is they think that he would on the court TV uh, video that I watched about this. They said, well, do you think he disposed of evidence in the Snake River down by Lewis and Clarkston? But the thing is, is, yeah, it would be smart. But here's the thing. Then why did his cell phone go dark for three hours after he was already on his way back up to Pullman, only 15 minutes away from Pullman? And it's dark for three hours. And that's like that is the time period where I'd be like, that's sketchy. Yeah, that time period is a sketchy time. Not when he's going shopping. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think he disposed of anything in the Snake River down in Lewiston and Clarkson off that bridge that they're talking about. If anything, it had to be after Johnson. Yeah. Washington between there and Pullman. Or somewhere totally like he literally drove an hour away while his phone was off and then came back. Yeah. And it was in a totally different direction somewhere we have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Garden City. Yeah. By a little no. Could be. <laughs> Could be. Maybe. But um, yeah, that that's his journey after the crime. That's it. That's all we know. That's what's in the PCA. It's really odd to me that they called it the middle of nowhere when he was only 15 minutes out of Pullman. That's not really the middle of nowhere. No, no, it's not. Like he's between two cities. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's only like 40 minute drive. It's not it's not really the middle of nowhere. Yeah. He was really close to Pullman at that point. Yep. Um, but the three hour time gap, it's another three hour time gap. That's what's weird. Mm-hmm. There's another one. Yeah. Cause isn't the original time gap three hours too? Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. It's three hours and then three hours again. Really strange. Yep. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that's suspicious? Does that add an element here of guilt for you? Does that uh, possibly signal that maybe the cell tower coverage is really like that bad? Or does he just like turning his phone off and going for drives? <laughs> I mean, it is plausible. As like suspicious as that sounds to people who really want to believe he's guilty, it is possible. Yeah. There's people out there that do it and aren't murderers. So, but I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Yes.